Today, we're gonna to be talking about the worst mistake that you can make as an artist. It's an important topic, so stick around. Hello and welcome, my name is Doodle Machine. Thank you for joining me for another artsy chat. Let's talk about mistakes, artist mistakes. Specifically, the single worst mistake that an artist can make. It's big, it's bad, and it's completely avoidable. And in fact, knowing about this mistake, maybe even me telling you about it in this video, may help you avoid it forever. So listen up. Now, nobody likes making mistakes, obviously. We all want to be perfect, flawless, all the time. But there are no perfect artists out there. We all make mistakes, some of us more than others. Luckily, most of the mistakes that we make are small little things that don't really matter in the big picture. L life is full of little mistakes, and we keep calm and carry on without letting them get to us in a big way. But there are some mistakes that we can make that have a big impact. These are the ones that we want to avoid. There are tons of ways that artists can make mistakes, even big ones. So how can I say that there is one mistake that's the worst mistake that they can make? You'll just have to trust me on this. Pretty much every artist has made this mistake at least once. It's a big mistake and it's completely avoidable. It's the kind of mistake that once you make it, you can learn from it and you're not likely to make it again. That's the hope anyways. Some artists continue making this mistake over and over and they're bad artists, frankly. I can say that with confidence. Hear me out. If you disagree that this is the single worst mistake that you can make as an artist, let me know and we can have a nice argument in the comments below. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. So let's talk through this. B bear with me. There's a few topics we need to cover here before we get into the one big mistake. Basically, there are two main types of mistakes that artists can make. There are mistakes that you can make while creating art, and there are mistakes that you can make while doing the job of being an artist. Both of these have many ways that mistakes can happen. And before we get into anything specific, let me make one thing perfectly clear. Art is about making mistakes. There's an old saying, the sooner you make your first thousand mistakes, the sooner you'll never make them again. Artists are constant learners. No artist in the history of artists were born with all their abilities and just did an amazing art without making plenty of mistakes along the way. In fact, I propose that making mistakes is the only way that you learn as an artist. When you're just starting out, our art is full of bad ideas, sloppy execution, failed experiments, and just tons of imperfections that we constantly make as we're trying stuff out and figuring out what works and what doesn't. Mistakes are how we learn, and we shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes as long as these mistakes help us grow. First, let's talk about the mistakes we make while making art. I'm not gonna go in great depth here, mostly because I wanna get to the topic of the video the worst mistake that you can make as an artist. And I'll get to that in a moment, I promise. And I could easily do an entire video on common mistakes that people make while they oh. are making art. And I will, I will do just that. So uh, get subscribed so you don't miss it. But real quick, first mm. there are the obvious mistakes. Making art that's the wrong size or shape or screwing up something that you're drawing on a painting so it doesn't look the way you want. Maybe you use the, the wrong materials that don't work for your size or subject, or maybe you spill ink all over your page or sneeze a big glob of boogers right into the middle of your beautiful watercolor painting. So yeah, nobody would ever argue that these are straight up obvious mistakes. Easy enough to avoid, but you know, they happen to everyone. Nothing worth stressing about. Keep calm, carry on. And then there are the less obvious mistakes. The mistakes that we make, but we don't realize that we're making them. Things like making weird or awkward compositions. Maybe our color balance is all messed up and we don't know what we're doing or, or how to fix it. Or our, our characters have problems like slanted heads or maybe they're asymmetrical, I don't know, eyes or something. Maybe we do things like put the thumbs on the wrong side of the hand or don't know how to draw some important thing that we just mess up all the time. This is a subject for another video because there are lots of common mistakes that artists make all the time that can be addressed when you know about them. And I'm not here to go over all of them today. So let's move on to the next main category of the mistakes that we can make. We're gonna talk about the mistakes of doing the job of an artist. 
And spoiler alert, the worst mistake, the reason I made this video that you can make as an artist is in this category. So mistakes of doing the job of the artist refers to the things that can go wrong while an artist does their business, fulfilling their customers' needs and growing their art company. And again here, I have more videos planned about how to run your art business. I've been a full-time illustrator for 15 years and I have my own art and design company. I've made plenty of mistakes over the years that have to do with running an art business and I've learned from these mistakes and I think I have a pretty good understanding of the most common mistakes. Things like pricing your artwork. Maybe you charge too much or too little. Things like how to find clients or, or how to promote yourself. I've seen artists spend too much real money on advertising their work when they don't have the skills to handle the projects they get. Or maybe they do have the skills and talent to handle the projects, but they just don't do any advertising. And then there's the nitty gritty of running a business, how to invoice, how to handle contracts and payments, lots of things that can go wrong and, and many aspects of being a professional artist. And this is where the mistakes are made. But there is one mistake that artists can make that is devastating. It's so common and so important that I wanted to do an entire video about this topic. And it's taken me a while to get to the point. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I can be long-winded. It's just that this mistake is so incredibly common and it just sucks because it's so totally avoidable. Some lessons are only learned the hard way though. So, you know, I think most artists make this mistake at least once in their careers. I've made this mistake sucks. And I'm glad that I've identified the cause so that I can be extra vigilant and make sure that I don't keep making this mistake over and over. Many artists will learn from their mistake and not make it again, and they'll be much more successful. Many artists won't, and they'll be worse off because of it. If you make this mistake too often, you might as well get a job flipping burgers or something because you will be a failure as an artist. I can guarantee that it's that important. So what is it? I'm going to tell you right after this word from our sponsor. Squarespace is the all in one platform for I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. Okay. Okay. The single worst mistake that you can make as an artist is not fulfilling your customer's need. I, I couldn't think of a better way to phrase that. So please let me explain. When a potential customer finds an artist that they want to work with, they're looking for a problem solver, someone who can do something that they can't for a specific purpose. This purpose might be a one-off kind of thing, like a single project that's done when it's done and that's that. Or they might be looking for somebody they can work with in the long term. For instance, a design studio might be looking for an illustrator who can help them with their art needs for the types of projects that they get all the time. But, and this is the important part, every single client or customer has something that they need fulfilled for the project. Or to put it another way, there are some parts of a project that are wants. For example, the client may want it to look really good, to be visually impactful, to appeal to a certain audience, Lots of things they could want as a result of working together. But there are always some parts of a project that are non-negotiable needs. Things that are so important that the project is literally unable to help them without fulfilling these needs. For example, a magazine wants to hire you to do a picture for their cover. They want it to be dynamic, engaging, and to appeal to a specific audience. And they want you to be easy to work with. They want you to be competent, to make good decisions, and to give them useful assets that they can work with. But they need it by the end of the month. And that's not optional. <laughs> the, the magazine needs to have enough production time to come out on a specific day. So if you don't fulfill their need to have their art by a specific day, then you failed. You fail to fulfill their need. So it doesn't matter how good you are or how awesome your art is or how easy you are to work with or how helpful you are while making changes or stuff or how friendly and punctual your correspondence is or, or whatever. None of that matters if you don't fulfill their need to have the art at a specific time. And if you don't fulfill that need, you're not gonna be hired again. It's as simple as that. And here's the thing, every single project has needs. Some might be obvious, like my first example, it's the deadline, or maybe a customer needs a painting at a specific size to go in a specific spot, or a designer needs to have a piece of vector art because their printing method requires vector data. 
there are, are so many needs and they can be very different project to project, but every single project has at least one need that must be met. And your job is to identify these needs and make sure beyond any shadow of a doubt that your customers are hiring someone who can fulfill their needs and do it right the first time without them needing to pull their hair out and baby you through the process to make sure that you're gonna fulfill their needs. Let me use an analogy here. Picture this, your pipes are leaking. They're soaking the carpet and couch in the basement and you need a plumber to come and fix your pipes. The plumber comes, they're super friendly. They seem knowledgeable, they have the best tools. They install the new pipe in the best way that looks super great and they hand you the best plumber business card that you've ever seen. But at the end of the day, when that plumber leaves, if your pipes are still leaking, it doesn't matter how good any of that other stuff was. They didn't fulfill your need and you're never going to hire them again. See, as artists, we wear many hats. We are problem solvers, we're creative thinkers, we're skilled craftsmen. We are knowledgeable about trends and styles and we understand the, the technological side, providing files and assets in the right format. But our most important hat is that of a need meter. Yeah, that's a thing, trust me. And without meeting the needs of the project, we're just not good artists. If we make the mistake of not recognizing and fulfilling our clients' needs, we're not gonna be artists for very long. It's the worst mistake you can make as an artist. And this is something that you need <laughs> to take to heart and promise yourself that you'll always put the project's needs at the top of your priorities. It's as simple as that. And that brings us to the end. Please let me know in the uh, comments below, are there any projects you've worked on that had unique needs that you had to meet? Uh, if you're new as an artist, did you find this helpful or at least entertaining? I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, give me a thumbs up if you like the video or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm Doodle Machine. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.